Welcome to a Germs Journey News Desk, an international dialogue about the challenge of supporting community relevant public health communications. Find out more about a Germs Journey at our website, germsjourney.com, or find us on Twitter at Germs Journey. Got it. Okay, we're live streaming back here at a Germs Journey News Desk, and this is our last uh, session of the afternoon. And it's been a, a really fascinating and interesting day. Uh, we're joined uh, by Professor Sarah Yoni and Indriani Lahari, uh, and we've got. We're going to try and introduce you to Charlie and Sapphire as well, who've been beavering away tweeting and posting messages on uh, Instagram and things like that as well, keeping a record of everything. Uh, and what we will do is we will uh, reshare the content from today uh, 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 via the Gems Journey website. We'll post that out via the Twitter feeds and the YouTube channel and everything. So uh, this is just our opportunity. If we were at a formal physical conference to kind of stand in the, the, the reception coffee bar bar, afterwards and just have a natter and, and kind of talk about what we've learned. Uh, so so I'm going to uh, go to our Zoom contributors first, and then I'm going to bring Charlie and Sapphire in. So Indriani, Sarah, how, how, you've been able to dip in and out during the day. What is there anything that stuck out for you? Or is there anything that you were, first of all, about the process and then about the, the topics and the, the things that people were talking about? Did you relax? Do you find the process could come on? This is one of the first, you know, doing, doing this kind of thing. How was it in terms of the way it was, it was facilitated your conversation? Did you find it, um, was it useful? Was it? Um... Yes, I think I can say that it was a really excellent session because we were working again with our stakeholders. So based on our model of co-creation and our model of co-collaboration with our stakeholders, to have them be part of the discussion talks to the very root of the model of our practice and having participatory action research whereby we work together and we don't feel that our participants then are some things get done to them but rather they work with us so it was really great to have that facilitation from you Rob and Indrani to be able to have those discussions with our stakeholders and it's, it's quite a reflexive I find this whole kind of zoom thing quite reflexive it's the it, it's the conversation and it triggers off into different aspects doesn't it how did you find the the chairing process Indrani was it kind of something that you're you're different from what you do in maybe a physical environment as to what you do online and a, or a meeting online or a, a, a supervision session online? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's um, uh, the digital society, you know, as we say, and a couple of things that came around in the discussions today as well around digital literacy. So it's not just about using these devices, but how we use these devices matter quite a lot to how we are communicating and reaching out to people, which I found like while chairing the session, I believe that it was, it, although there wasn't a script, but it actually you know, went very well as a script, you know. So I think that uh, people knew what they were saying and they were connecting very well. And that stakeholder and research um, um, kind of collaboration, uh, which Sarah was saying that that participatory element was coming back time and again, you know, in the conversation where basically um, I thought that it was really um, good to see how the publisher also became aware of all the um, you know interdisciplinary nature of the project started talking about that and taking that into consideration for their publishing and all of that so that was quite unique and also the illustrator so yeah I enjoyed quite a lot yeah, there was a, a, a really kind of emergent theme of media literacies, wasn't there? You know, kind of, and the phrase was used, I think it was by the uh, BBC Media Action uh, conversation about building capacity and capability, which is very different from what these some of these organisations were talking about even just a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, and so the, the concentration and acceleration of thinking that the pandemic's 
uh, uh, necessitated is maybe something that we, we, you know, we've got to say, you know, we're, we're in a different environment now and we're in a different world and we need to learn what that is and what supports it and what motivates people in that situation and, uh, and how that works. I'm going to, I'm going to j- bring Charlie in at this point because uh, I feel like I, I now feel like I'm in a radio studio, <laughs> <laughs> which is rather than a zoom call because we're, we're, we're socially distant but we're present uh which has been an unusual thing to do as well i think this is the first time uh second or third time i've done an event in in person in the last year Uh, but charlie tell us a little bit about um your background involvement in the project and what it is you've you've done yes so i joined the project initially in 2019 um in january when we went to india in Ahmedabad, um and that was kind of one of my my first experiences of leaving the country really um, I was introduced to the project by one of my lecturers who had worked with uh, Germ's Journey on the Think Tank project. Um, so she created a hand washing video in Birmingham. And then my role within the India trip was to create a hand washing video in Ahmedabad. Um, and it was really useful for me to kind of see just an outside perspective of things, um, especially growing up, never really leaving the country at all, and then kind of being thrown into a completely separate environment. Um, and it's quite nice learning so many new things in such a short space of time. Um, and then having the time after that to kind of reflect upon what we'd seen and what we'd learned and who we'd worked with um, in like the editing process of things. Um, and, and what was that, what was that learned and what can you pick out from, from what you remembered that were kind of the, what, what shifted and changed? Uh, there's quite a lot of things. And I think it was about how different audiences kind of react to different things. So for example, like the handwashing video in India is very different to the handwashing video we created in Sierra Leone. Um, and that was to, to do with the people we spoke to in Sierra Leone, how they, how they explain that their data packages on their phone kind of allows access to certain websites. So either WhatsApp or Facebook um, and how they'd receive the information would be using WhatsApp. Um, so the hand washing video we created there was only 30 seconds long and it was a portrait video. So you could view on your phone quite easily if you had limited data access. Whereas in India, where they have more smartphones or more access to internet, then the, the hand washing video is around three minutes long. Um, and it's quite high quality, um, different camera angles and things like that, which makes the file even huge, even good huger, but, um, it, it works well. And we can see that on the YouTube statistics as well. At the minute that there's been a massive increase in the amount of people like searching for the hand washing songs for kids. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm fascinated. And one of the things that kind of following up with this kind of thing is is what are those touch points that trigger engagement? Yeah, uh, because uh, one of the things that Baslow was talking about was that they they can do things and share things. They they can offer things, put things out into the public domain, but they don't get shared. And we're trying to find those things that you know if it, it, it what's that Henry Jenkins things? If it doesn't spread, it's dead. Uh, and we're trying to find those things that kind of that spreadable media. What makes something so? It's in, you know, it's 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 to use that terrible uh, uh, you know phrase, the kind of viral media that all you know, kind of that goes back a bit now, doesn't it? You know, it's not uh, a, a, a relevant phrase for the moment, or is it? Uh, so, so one of the challenges with this, I think, it strikes me is kind of the scale. So we, you kind of your experience as a student on a single trip. And have you got a sense of where this fits or potentially could fit? I mean, that's a difficult question to answer, but is it? I think speaking to the people today, it's, it's kind of clarified a lot of things as well and kind of confirmed what we already knew. Um, so I think as Mary and Sierra Leone mentioned how they realized using bars of soap rather than the liquid soap was quite important because it was, it was recognizable and it was more trusted. Um, and that was something we also figured out whilst we were there is that people would prefer to use like napkins rather than using a towel when drying their hands. Um, or the bars of soap compared to liquid. Um, and similar things again about like the data access and how using short clips and um, like easy accessible uh, media, so like the radio shows, um, which is why we're doing this. And I think it's just confirming that everyone's kind of on the same page at the moment, that there needs to be some sort of new approach to media, um, just to make it more accessible to the general, general public rather than a specific few groups of people. I'm going to bring Sapphire over in a second, but while I do, just ask Sarah and Andrade a question, really. is like, what do we need to be putting into our curriculum and in what way to, to as, as Charlie's just said, we need to be rethinking through the purpose and the role of our media in this process. Where does this fit and how do we get it 
in there to because you know, a health management course doesn't include things about community often include things about communication a media course doesn't often include things about public engagement Where, how do we put this in <laughs> I think it's integral actually to to all programs and just as we have built in service-based learning for our students whereby they can all do projects with um, DMU Local and DMU Global and be involved in community-based projects. I think that this aspect of communicating about those projects and about the curriculum area that people are studying, it means that actually it's about media literacy and I think it should be a part of every program because we have to be able to communicate with an audience. Otherwise, we are doing research in little hermetic circles and it never gets out there. So for me, it is part of our public good and part of our commitment to create knowledge that should be shared more widely. Andriani, what will you be telling your colleagues well, I'll echo the similar kind of thoughts that Sarah just said, and it's kind of quite becoming quite crucial. We are having this um, discussion now, which has started like, you know, uh, even a year earlier. I think the discussion was not there around digital literacy or how uh, media should actually talk to other disciplines rather than be in pocket. So I think these kind of conversations need to happen. But as Charlie was saying, I know he, he was talking about the WhatsApp experience and all of that. So something that struck to me at that point of time is that, you know, we, we, we can't just talk about digital literacy as a standalone element, but we have to also think about the consumption literacy because we are talking about tapping into that audience market and what actually, um, you know, indicates uh, or what actually dictates TRP is not going to dictate the TRP for community media, if you think that way, but community media has got a, a, a huge role to play to educate people and, and that's what we need you know we have got a digital society yes but we actually doesn't know how to use those platforms and thereby there are you know lots of mental health issues that has come up as well during this time so definitely these um you know these conversations need to happen so, so facilitating and empowering people to use the tools that's to find right. their own voice and express their own way in an accountable and responsible way uh, is to encapsulate it. Let's bring in Sapphire. Uh, she's been working diligently in the background. And um, uh, you t tell us a little bit about your background and involvement with the project first, and then I'll ask you a couple of yeah, questions. Yeah, so I um, originally start, I got involved with the project when I was working on my um, education practice masters at DMU. And uh, Professor Sarah Uni was one of my uh, lecturers on the course. And um, she was saying about um, a book and the website that her and Dr. Katie Laird had just published and that she would like um, somebody to do some research um, on the effectiveness of the book with children. Um, so I um, didn't have anything to do at all. I, didn't, I had no idea what I was going to do on my uh, dissertation at that point. So it was actually on the same day as I was meant to be having a meeting with my um, dissertation supervisor. So um, she asked if I would be interested in doing some research. So I said yes, and um, I did my dissertation on that. And then as I was doing that, um, it was towards the end of my master's that Sarah and Katie uh, invited me to do a PhD to work sort of more full time on the project. And yeah, so since then, so since 2017, I've now since I'm in my, just started my third year, <sighs> was it fourth year, of um, the PhD and doing the research on the project. And it's just sort of spiralled from there, from going from um, sort of looking at how the book um, is effective. Um, how effective the book is sorry at teaching children and aiding their understanding to now looking at how the behavior and seeing if it actually changes hand auction behavior and even to the point where now we're hoping to get into hospitals soon later in, uh, later on in the year and seeing if that actually has a, um, an effect on the reduction of the infection rates so sort of started from that and then just spiraled into all these different types of things and um, as Charlie said we've gone on trips to India and Sierra Leone um, the, 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 one of the conversations we had, which unfortunately we had kind of cut short because of a kind of time restriction, was with uh, Rosie Park in Internews, and we'll make sure it's available on the website. Uh, and her role, uh, I've known Rosie for a couple of years now, but her role is the digital, is, sorry, the global impact manager for Internews. And they've recognised that it's, it's, it's kind of pointless doing this mm -hmm. if you don't know what impact yeah. it has. And it was interesting, BBC Media Action, 
we're talking about the tools that people have and what it, what impact it has as well. And their research is leading to that. So what, it, what are your kind of thoughts at the moment, which obviously can change <laughs> and probably do change on a regular basis? About what's that crux point that makes that difference with something like this? Why, why is it different? Why is it kind of relevant to, um, you know, to do this in this way? Um, well, I think, as we were saying earlier, sort of like the doing the, the whole ethos of the project is co-creation, co-collaboration and participatory action research, which, as Sarah said earlier, it's not doing research to participants, it's doing it with them, it's learning from them, it's having a trusted set of um, sort of educational resources that people can all use. And I think, like I was saying, that measuring the impact and things, how can we measure the impact of something if the 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 thing that we're trying to measure isn't created by the people who are going to be using it by the end users um so yeah i think it's just it's a it's been a case of working in this way of really making sure it's a joint a collaborative process and a joint sort of agency over the resources and over the research not just making the resources but also the research as well and actually the research methods and things like that um, for example, we're working in India and Sierra Leone, um, doing the workshops with the teachers and the workshops with the children. We we spoke to the, the NGOs and um, the University of McKinney and asked them sort of the best ways to sort of um, work with the children, work with the teachers in order to get the uh, sort of the, the knowledge that we need, the research to measure the impact of the resources and the project and what that's having. There was something fascinating that Anne said from the Nuffield Population Centre, which was that uh, the... The, in, the, the input that they'd had from the therapy process, development process, um, what came through from people who were involved in that was that they wanted to understand and learn from the other participants. Mm. Yeah. And that co-creation collaboration process is in now in the, you know, it's starting to be embedded in these large scale uh, uh, projects as well. And, you know, the, the, the kind of funding for these things hopefully will embed that kind of level of co-creation and co-development with it. So I, I, for me, I think that the kind of personal observation for me is that actually this has been about bringing people together who may not have been known that they were doing something similar and shared something. And it's kind of happened by almost a process of osmosis and luck and good fortune, whatever it is. But what we've, we've kind of found something where we are, we share similar values and similar expectations. I'm, I'm going to give the last word to Sarah just to, to kind of wrap up and, and kind of summarise what sh- you think is maybe the, the benefit of uh, the, the, you know, what should we be looking for next as a way to uh, get people to, 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 to let's, let's phrase this right, is to build support for this approach. I think that having a common goal is really important. And I think part of our common goal is that research that's undertaken in universities around, say, the science of germ transfer and then around the education of learning theories of how we can get that across to children and adults. And then the media digital literacy about how you can then express that in ways that reach that wider audience it's for me it's all about meeting those um, actual UN sustainable development goals around health and education that together through collaborative action and the UN's goals for 2030 we can make a better world and that this is just one small part and it needs to be interdisciplinary it needs to be with across media and education and health and how we can draw on all those disciplines to create something that is actually much, much better for the world and to always make it open and collaborative and to always invite people to come and join us because this is work that we think ultimately will help people to have better lives and better health. And what a great ethos to finish with. And that's a a core and key message that I think uh, everybody today uh, uh, following us on on YouTube and uh, who may watch these uh, uh, or listen to these in the in the in the coming weeks would uh, hopefully echo. You can keep in contact with Germs Journey by going to the website germsjourney.com, uh, Germs Journey at sorry at Germs Journey on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and I'm really surprised I haven't 
gave my website address out, which is what I normally do because I'm programmed like that now. But uh, so uh, thank you very much to everybody who contributed today, everybody who's listened today, and everybody will follow this up. It's definitely a conversation that we are looking to extend and develop and facilitate in the future. So, but it's been a great day. Uh, and if from a slightly chilly lab now, uh, the air conditioning's kicked in and I think Sapphire is going to go and find a coat and get warm somewhere. So thank you very much, everybody. It's been great. Thank you. Thank, thanks, everybody. Thank, thank, everybody. thank, thank you. you. You've been following a GERMS journey, an international dialogue about the challenge of supporting community-relevant public health communications. You can find us on Twitter, at Germs Journey or go to our website germsjourney.com